Hello friends, this is Ron the Meathead Gardener. I'm calling myself that because that's the way I garden. I'm not an expert, I don't profess to be, uh, but I'll, what I'll show you in this series is some of the highs and lows and ups and downs that I've had growing, uh, mainly for the first time, uh, a series of uh, 12 different peppers. Uh, we'll look at the Italian pepper, uh, tequila sunrise pepper, the ghost pepper, the cayenne, the daddle, the serrano, the Korean, the scorpion, the habanero, the jalapeno, the kung pao, the bell pepper, and the cherry pepper. Uh, you'll be able to see those peppers in various stages of growth, uh, and you'll be able to see the fruit in various stages of maturity. We're starting to get a little sprinkle here, so I'll, uh, I'll wrap this up. Oh, here's forgot to introduce my buddy here. This is Baby Mama. So, fasten your seatbelts. It's not really a wild ride. It's just the meathead in me talking. Anyway, enjoy. Here's a winner. This is a Kung Pao pepper. Vigorous and fast growing. This is one of the fastest of all the 14 varieties of peppers I got growing this year. I'm growing that many because I, I want to find out what works and then go by the process of elimination and narrow it down. And you know, I'd like to settle down on maybe five or six really solid peppers that are uh, that I get a unique taste. Uh, that uh, can make a good sauce and that aren't, uh, you know, susceptible to, you know, nematodes and uh, which are earthborne viruses. It's, it's actually a segmented worm that attaches itself to the root system. It's in all soils and it's especially prolific here because we don't get a, uh, a killing frost enough to, uh, to get down into the earth and, and to kill those nematodes. But we also get, you know, there's all kinds of uh, you know, stink bugs and uh, grasshoppers and aphids and you name it. They're all over the place. I am an organic gardener and I'm really trying to stick to that theme, uh, which it's, it's okay. Sounds pretty cool. Bottom line is you, you, when you do that method, you've got to grow extra and you've got to give some up to Mother Nature, give some up to the critters to the bugs, to drought, to screwing up, which is what I have a pension for doing. But getting back to the Kung Pao, this is a vigorous plant. Scoville rating is about 12,000. Not really that hot. By the way, the Scoville rating, uh, it goes from zero, which is, a, which is no heat. That would be a, a green or a red bell pepper, all the way to uh, which you will see in this uh, series, uh, the scorpion pepper, which uh, is two million on the Scoville rating. So everything in between has some kind of a heat factor, and this one stands at 12,000. You can see the pepper, it's similar to a cayenne. It starts out as beautiful green and turns into this, oh, look at this, it's red, it's just unblemished, gorgeous pepper. Uh, they get to be about six to nine inches long, and, the Kung Pao, you've probably seen it in your Chinese dishes. Uh, it's a, uh, I'm hoping to make a standalone sauce. I've already harvested, you can see his nip marks all over the place, but I've harvested probably a good pound already or more. Oh, way more than that. Probably, a, I'd say a quart and a half, maybe two quarts. I put everything in the freezer. I just heard an owl. We back up to uh, Forever Wild, so there's there's critters all over the place, but Kung Pao, awesome pepper. Here's a nice looking pepper. This is called a Jimmy Nardello Italian pepper. Apparently it's Jimmy Nardello, an Italian immigrant, moved over just before the turn of the century to Connecticut. And he's the one that brought this bad boy to this, to the new world, so to speak. But this is your kind of traditional Italian pepper. They're great for frying. Uh, I'm not really sure 
I've never grown them before. I, I wouldn't mind uh, trying them out for a sauce, but most likely we'll, we'll eat these in salads and, and sauces and things like that. It's, this is a sweet variety, has no heat, so it would be zero on the Scoville rating. Uh, gets to be about two feet tall, so it's got another foot to go. But I'm, I'm getting a little yield. You can see the peppers are really kind of neat looking. They curl up, get all kinds of weird shapes. Uh, I haven't eaten one yet. This is the first time they've, it just showed up within the last week. Uh, the fruit here, but I suspect it's going to be a uh, uh, thin-walled, much like a cayenne pepper. It's, uh, as I said, it's a slow grower. It's 90 days from transplant. It's a long time to have peppers hanging around. I've got some to take up to four months. Uh, but this one here, we'll see how it goes. Everything's trying to make the grade. I've got 14 different kinds. You know, if they're nice to me, They'll make the grade, if not, sayonara. But this one here, you know, because it's somewhat of an heirloom, uh, the seeds will be viable. The seeds should produce an identical to the parent. Uh, and there's not too many peppers that you can do that with because there have been so many of them have been hybridized. So uh, in that sense, this is pretty unique. And I think we're going to, this might be a winner right here. We have a green bell pepper. Everybody knows what that is. I just thought I'd show you this one. I've been having some decent luck. They're slow growers, which makes it tough. You can see how small the fruit is. And that fruit will you know, get nice and big. But in the meantime, while it's hanging around on the vine, so to speak, it's, it invites about every bug that I have in this neighborhood. So I, and I'm not, I'm an organic, Grower, so I don't have any, I don't use any pesticides, any insecticides, any herbicides. Uh, I don't use any store-bought nitrite or nitrate-based uh, fertilizers. Everything is compost or compost tea. I've had great results doing that, so I'm not going to change, but I have to allow for loss. Mother Nature is going to take her cut. My, and her cut right now is pretty tough. It's about 50%. But this plant here, we've already harvested a lot of fruit off of it. It's, uh, you know, the, um, the bell peppers, uh, the origins are in South America. A lot of pepper, well, I think pretty much all the peppers came out of the Amazon region. I have to get down on my hands and knees for this one. This is a uh, yellow habanero pepper. It's just getting some fruit now. You can see it'll turn yellow, hopefully. Still got some flowers, it's still fruiting. Yeah, it's a nice little plant. Um, you know, it's going to be um, uh, similar to all the other habaneros. The, their origins can be traced to the Amazon. I'm going to wait for this plane to go by. But their origins uh, have been traced back to 8,500 years ago. It's a perennial, it's a flowering plant, it's perfect for container gardens. Uh, the fruit is orange, yellow, red, chocolate. I mean, it comes. It's been so hybridized. Uh, you know, this is the this is really the the queen or king of, of all hot peppers. Uh, they've been it's been hybridized and it's been pulled and prodded and twisted in every different which way to produce about half the different hot peppers that I'm growing. That's for sure. But it, it's going to produce a, about a two inch long fruit. It's a thin-walled fruit, very, very fruity flavored and hot. It's going to be about 350,000 on Scoville rating, so got a nice pepper here. This one is a Korean dark green pepper. It's an heirloom out of Korea. This is a vigorous, fast-growing pepper that grows to about two feet this one here, uh, it's already produced quite a bit for us. Uh, we're in the waning stages as the heat just, uh, we're getting obliterated with, with heat and humidity. And all these, uh, the peppers that I'm growing will, will take a little bit of a hiatus and then they'll crank up again in the fall. Uh, this one here, the, uh, the peppers, 
on the Scoville rating, uh, rated about 50,000, uh, sort of in line with, uh, with a jalapeno. In fact, it looks a little bit like one, has the same texture, it's a thick-walled fruit. You can see they start off uh, green and they turn this beautiful red and they do look a little bit like a jalapeno and uh, they're, it's a great uh, pepper for kimchi dishes uh, but I'm going to use this one for sauce. I think this is going to be great for a standalone sauce and uh, you know, we'll see how that works out. It's hot folks. It's a got to be 95 to 100 and then we have a heat index on top of that so excuse the sweat this speaking of sweat this is the hottest pepper on the planet right now this is a it's called a scorpion pepper it's also known as a Trinidad Maruga scorpion pepper it's original uh, the origins are from uh, Trinidad and uh, Tobago. The Scoville rating is off the charts. The Scoville rating is up to 2 million. And the reason I say it's the hottest pepper on the planet right now is because they hybridize these uh, pepper plants to the max. And about every three or four years they can get the formula right and they produce a hotter and hotter variety. It started out in 2001, I believe, the habanero was the hottest pepper on the planet with a Scoville rating of somewhere around 350,000. And then uh, they tinkered with that and they came up with uh, the boot jalakia, also known as the goat, ghost pepper. And that topped out at just about a million two in a Scoville. Well, this one blows them all away. Uh, this is a fabulous pepper. It's it's somewhat fast growing. A lot of these uh, hybridized uh, hot peppers are just slow as molasses. They're, they take up to 90 days from t from time of transplant to uh, to grow. I've been harvesting a little bit off of this guy. You can see uh, one of the peppers right here. Uh, it's kind of wrinkled skin. Uh, pretty good size, about uh, golf ball size is what they'll be. Uh, they'll turn a nice orange color. Uh, one of the unique uh, things about this, uh, uh, yes, it's hot, but the nice, it's unique because you bite into it and it's a, one of those slow release uh, heat type uh, peppers where you'll actually be able to enjoy the fruitiness and the, and the uniqueness of the taste for a few seconds and then starting at the tip of your tongue and then working all the way down to your toes, the heat builds and it's just a real monster. So this one here, I'm going to handle it with care. I plan on making some sauces and using this uh, probably to uh, accent a base sauce like a serrano pepper or maybe even uh, uh, a jalapeno or something like that when I make my sauces. If you tried to make a standalone sauce with these, I think you just wind up making something that would burn right through the glass bottle. So. Uh, I'm going to handle this with care, but uh, this should be a real winner.